Two. Have you been wondering how to live a healthy, vibrant lifestyle, but you're struggling to make sense of all of the conflicting health and wellness information that's out there? Well, you've come to the right place. Hello and welcome to Diet Demystified Summit panel discussion. Uh, I'm Denise Siegel. I am the CEO and curator of Living Healthy List, uh, and I'm also the host of Diet Demystified Summit. So each day this week, we have shared uh, two interviews with our uh, experts um, on stuff like nutrition and health and wellness. Essentially, the question is, um, how do you nourish your body, mind, and soul for a vibrant you at every age? If you haven't signed up for the interview series, you still can, uh, and I did put that information in the group chat. Uh, so please uh, feel free to do that. It's a free summit, uh, and the interviews, uh, I believe, are invaluable. There are tidbits in each one of the interviews that I know you can use, and I know you're going to get some great value today as well. Um, so I'm really excited to have four more of our awesome Living Healthy List experts here today to give you even more tips, even more strategies that you can incorporate in your life starting today and live your life to the fullest. So my guests today are Lori Wood Bryant Woolridge. I always call you Lori B.W. Hey there. You're it's a mouthful. <laughs> Lori B.W. Leanne Pruitt. Luann Beekler and my friend Michelle Boss. Uh, ladies, thank you and welcome here today. Um, if you would, um, I'd ask you to, you know, take a couple minutes uh, and let us know who you are, uh, what you do, uh, and who you help. Uh, Ms. Laura, if you would start for us, please. Absolutely. So I am the founder of the Soul Innovations Coaching Group uh, and the creator of the Soul Sexy Transformation. So what I do, exactly, I am a spiritual life coach. I am an author, a speaker, a joyful flirt, an angel scribe, and a love connoisseur. And all that thing comes together to create an, a coaching program where I really help my clients master the mind-body-soul integration. We talk a lot about mind-body-soul connection, but we don't really do a lot of integrating. So I really help them with that integration in the areas of their love lives, their relationships, their sex life, but also, and most importantly, helping them develop a loving, fulfilling, healthy relationship with themselves first, and then let that stuff sprinkle out into the rest of the world. So I'm excited to be here and to talk a little bit about how your spiritual diet is just as important as the rest of it. So. Awesome. Thanks, Lori. Uh, Leanne, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Did you say Leanne or Luann? Oh, sorry, Leanne. <laughs> okay. I know, it's like I hear, I know, Le Leanne and Luann, we gotta, he's like, no, it's me and my turn. <laughs> um, you know what, Denise, I am so excited to be here today. My name is Leanne Pruitt with Let's Ace Your Space. And what I do is I help on the go people like all of you guys um, clear their clutter so that it no longer blocks their momentum and so that they can gain control in their life. And I was so excited to be a part of this because like for me, my definition of clutter is really anything that gets in the way of your goals, your dreams, what you want to do in life. Now, of course, I work, I work very, very much with physical clutter, but really anything that's stopping you is clutter. If you, you can have a cluttered diet, you can have a cluttered, cluttered finances, as Michelle is going to talk about, uh, certainly a cluttered spiritual life. Um, and I just, I think that it is so important to be able to put all of those together and, and just clear out as much of that clutter as you can to be able to have a, how did you say it, a, a nourished body, mind, and soul. So I am really excited to um, talk about ways that people can clear their clutter and nourish their mind, body, and soul. Thanks. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Leanne. So now I'm going to go to Lou Ann. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Luann Beekler. They call me the little spark. My company is PMC Events and Coaching and I help people live in joy. 
and identify their top five passions and set a course to living those in their life because that is what you were designed to do. So just do that. It's about the power of a positive mindset. And we use the tools of the passion test to uh, help us retrain our brain in order to focus on the positive in our life and create the positive in our life. And so it's about reprogramming our brain and um, in the way we talk to ourselves, the way we talk to others, the way we uh, appear in the world. Awesome. And Luann, you are, you are the spark. <laughs> when you walk into a room, you do, you light it up, my friend. Thank you so much. Oh, so, uh, you are welcome. Um, oh, where'd Michelle go? We, we just lost her, but I'm sure she'll be back in a second. She'll be back. So. We will give her a second uh, to pop back in. So for those of you who are listening and new to uh, our group, um, we're focusing on um, nourishing our body so we can live that happy, healthy lifestyle, that fulfilled lifestyle that we've always dreamed of. We all want health. We all want happiness. We all want to feel that we have purpose in our lives. So I thank you all for, uh, for being here today. I'm really excited. And here she is. She's back. So sorry if you guys can hear me. I'm going to get back on video. Our there we go. Connection. Dicey with everyone being home yeah. right now. <laughs> I can imagine. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Michelle Boss. I am a personal finance coach and educator. So I get to help people focus on their financial wellness, also known as the money boss. So I help independent women. Uh, I guide them with their behaviors, as Leanne alluded to, their personal finance organization. And I firmly believe that financial wellness is so much more than just focusing on your finances. Um, and I consider myself a holistic financial coach. I, I really do um, bring in a lot of other elements and aspects to um, finances and, and wellness as I'm working one-on-one -on -one and with groups. And um, this is a perfect tie-in because our overall wellness and um, getting to share a little bit more about my Ayurvedic background and um, how we can budget and incorporate our healthy lifestyles um, into our finances. This, this is what I'm excited to touch on today. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. I'm excited to have all of you here today. So let's just dive right in. I'm going to ask you the question and then, you know, whoever wants to start that please uh, do so. The main question, you know, based on what you guys all do, and it's so different. There's so, you have such varied backgrounds, but it still makes sense. There's still a connection. So tell us what, in alignment with what you do, what does nourish your body, mind, and soul mean to you? Okay. Um, so for me, um, when I think about like nourishing my body, mind, and soul, um, the first thing that comes to mind is I want to have a reason to nourish my body, mind, and soul. Um, if I if I if I'm left to my own devices, you know, I'll stay in the bed. I'll eat DoorDash all day, <laughs> and all that sort of thing. Um, so. And, and also like thinking, looking at my definition of clutter, which is anything that gets in the way um, of, of whatever. I think that the, such a key thing with um, like nourishing our body, mind, and soul is really knowing what our, what your, what your purpose is, or how, like Luann would say, your passion and knowing your why, because if you know those things, um, then you, then you, will you're you're nourishing your body mind and spirit just by working in that direction in that positive direction and if you know your why and if you know you know what purpose you're working toward and i didn't say the purpose i said a purpose i think we all have very many purposes and they they vary um from time to time uh, you know as we go along our life but if you have those then you're automatically going to um enjoy supporting nourishing your body mind and spirit so that you're in a place to work towards towards your why and towards your purpose um 
so that's for me like you know getting rid of the clutter is you know that's you know that's i love doing that and i love helping people get get rid of that um but if they have if you have clutter in your life somewhere then it is stopping you from really realizing um that you know the the body mind and spirit and the you know your whys and what you want to do so that that to me is how you know from from the clutter angle you know what n nourishing your body mind and spirit means i i couldn't agree more and i'd love to jump in right there so what we say in the passion test is clarity is power mm -hmm. and so it is sorting through the clutter of your mind and what society's throwing you at throwing at you in the world and focusing in on that which is most important to you in our case your passions is what we label it right and interestingly enough the subtitle of the book is the effortless path to your life's purpose and so it's absolutely about finding your why and in the work i do denise i find that 95 percent of the time in their top five passions is their physical health and we got to get our mindset on that focus cl clarity around that as leanne was saying and then everything can come into alignment with it um, so we say the secret to living a passionate life is whenever you're faced with a choice a decision or an opportunity choose in favor of your passions mm -hmm. so once you've identified that health is a key one of your passions in your life then every choice you make about what food you put in your mouth what activity you do becomes an easy decision and it's inspired by your why instead of oh i have to go on a diet quote unquote right and of course all of us know diets don't work <laughs> well i'll jump in here because i think that of course i'm going to say that spirituality is the the driver to all of this um but it ties in so nicely right and like I said in the introduction is we do talk a lot about the mind body soul connection but we don't integrate soul into it as much because there is such confusion about what soul what spirit what spirituality is and we tend to um, get it mixed up with religion and religious dogma and so therefore because that's not what I do that's not what I believe we think that spirituality is not a part of who we are and an important part of our healthy um, life and lifestyle. So just if I could quickly talk about what spirituality really is, it is about being concerned about the quality of your human spirit or your soul, as opposed to material or physical things. And so when we're concerned about the quality of our human spirit, we're really talking about our emotions, right? And emotions are the home base of your soul. Your emotions are your GPS to what everything that ails you, what everything's wonderful. You know where you stand in alignment when your emotions tell you where you are. So it's an important part because how many of us overeat because of emotions? How many of us self-medicate because of emotional imbalances? So spirituality, your soul is, it just, it's everything. Of course, I'm going to say that, <laughs> but when we have spiritual deficiencies, just like we have nutritional deficiencies, it throws our body off, it throws our emotions off, it throws our mind and our mental acuity off. So if you think of some of the spiritual imbalances like masculine feminine energy, well, what the hell does that really mean, right? When we throw those words around, but what does it mean? We both, all of us have masculine feminine energy. But when you are um, leading with your masculine energy, let's say, that's the, the survival, that's the go out and get them, that's the hunt and gathering, that's the taking care of my tribe, that's the, you know, making sure that they are protected, my, my assets and everything are protected. You are ignoring that other side, and then what happens? Life imbalance, the erosion of intimacy and vulnerability. If your balance is on the feminine energy side, where it's all about compassion and the good of all instead of just the few, it's about kindness and making sure everybody's nurtured and cared for, and you're neglecting the masculine side and that's out of balance, well, then that's when you become the people pleaser. That's when you become the self-doubter. That's when you procrastinate because you don't know. So your spiritual 
balances are really important. Another important one that we don't think about at all is your sexual energy. And sexual energy has now been equated to lust. So if I embrace my sexual energy, that means I'm off onto the road of no return and you know all hell's gonna break loose. But really, in spiritual terms, your sexual energy is creative energy. That is the purpose of sexual energy. The ultimate creation is life. But when you keep your sexual energy, AKA spiritual energy alive and healthy and bubbling along, this affects your self-efficacy, your ability to get things done. It affects your self-expression because the sexual energy, the creative energy, determines the way you wear your hair, the kind of clothes you wear, what you eat, self-expression, uniqueness. It, your problem solving, when you feel stuck, you never know what to do, excuse me, self-doubt, tap into your creative sexual energy. Because instead of seeing things black and white, you're seeing things in grays and orange and pinks, and there's different ways to get to the same place. So our spiritual imbalances and, and deficiencies affect everything because they start with our emotions, and then that spreads out to the physical as well as the mental stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Lots to think about. Yeah. Already you guys have gotten, given us so much to think about. <laughs> So Wish powerful, you Lori. Thank so you. So powerful, Lori. <laughs> yeah. And I, I find it really interesting that um, all of us are speaking, who have spoke so far, are really kind of preaching to the same choir because uh, to me, um, nourishing the mind, body, and soul means a lifestyle. And finding that balance between all three it's not something that's always intuitive. Um, and I'll talk about this in, in a little bit, but it's something I had to learn or relearn. And it starts with the why. And that's definitely part of my process as well, finding a really deep, psychologically rooted, emotional why to stay connected to nourishing throughout the day. But it really you know, it starts with the morning when I wake up, my routine, what I do, what I feed, my body, you know, when I wake up and, and start my day off, um, my mind, what I am ingesting, what I'm also intentionally filtering so that I'm not I'm bringing that into my conscious or reality. And then, you know, finding the balance between the spiritual the creative energy that Lori's speaking to, and also the pragmatic, practical, not only of what we're nourishing our bodies with, um, but the, you know, balancing even down to the numbers um, with our finances, it's all about balance. So um, for me, it, it's all about self-love and balancing and giving that priority to nourishing. Because it's very easy to get caught up with other things and not make that a priority. So that's what it means to me. Awesome. So I have a couple of questions for, you know, that, that I want to ask all of you, and I'm going to kind of ask them in, in various, um, uh, no specific order. So um, I'm going to start with Leanne. Leanne, tell me, how does clutter get in the way of creating that vibrant you? Well, um, clutter gets in the way of creating that vibrant you just because it, it you know clutter takes up so much physical and mental bandwidth um and it's it really stops you i mean you know physically you can think of if you got physical clutter um maybe just you know simply maybe you don't want to have anybody over to the house not that we can have anybody over the house right now but maybe you maybe there's something that you desire to do but it's stopping you from doing it because you're ashamed of the clutter maybe you can't find things that that you um that you need so with the with the physical you know talking about physical clutter um but it also when you have clutter, even if you think it's not bothering you, if you think it's not, um, you're like, eh, I, I, like a lot of times people say, oh, I'm creative, I need clutter around. But it really does take up um, like the physical and mental bandwidth. And somebody asked me once, like, you know, what are you talking about? And well, we can think of it as like, like 
our computers. Like right now, so many people are on Facebook and Zoom and using our computers because we, that's how we're connecting. So our connections are slower. It's like there are more windows open. Things are being taken up. Um, you know, bandwidth is being taken up. So you're not as able, able to be as directed to where you want to go. Um, Think of it as, you know, walking, if you're walking down a hall, you know, just this is kind of, you know, you know, you know, physically or just, you know, mentally walking down a hall. If it's a clear hall, you've got a clear path to what you want to do. But if there are things on either side, you know, in the hall, if it's stopped, you know, maybe it gets in your way or maybe you're distracted by it so that you stop and look at that and you're not getting to your clear destination. Um, so that's that to me is like there are just so many ways that you know we use clutter as an excuse but clutter also um you know even if it's not if we don't think we're using it as an excuse to stop us from things it really does still stop us or hinders us slows us from where we want to get mm -hmm. that does make sense it really does because i know in times when in my office i know myself i i can't get started if my desk is a mess right and mm -hmm. so, you know, even if I have things that I need to do, mm -hmm. I have to take that time and, and maybe I don't have the time. So that's a very good point. I appreciate right. that. Michelle, I'm going to jump down to you. Um, I know that when you were in your 30s, you had some challenges with your health. And so you started uh, a health journey. Um, and so how, tell us how, you know, kind of a little bit about how that happened and how that, the, how that helps you work with your clients when it comes to nourishing yourself? Yes, so I was um, in corporate and depend. my job was sales and pretty much 99% over the phone. So I relied on my voice. I discovered that I, or I found that I was having chronic laryngitis. I was having a huge issues with energy balance and you know going through my life got married had kids um, was going through a divorce I mean it all makes sense looking back now but um, I was kind of on autopilot doing what I needed to do right to support my family and eventually these health issues came up for me I was so fortunate to be introduced to my health coach who is an Ayurvedic practitioner and through studying with her, working as a client and then going through her programs and even eventually becoming an assistant coach for her programs in Ayurveda, I discovered that the health issues I was having was related to my diet and lifestyle. And so it took me that person, that coach to shed the light on and give me some suggestions or recommendations on, okay, you know, cut out this, you're, you're sensitive to wheat and to gluten, you know, cut out the soy, um, kind of cleaning things up and challenging the way I was nourishing myself, not only from a diet perspective, because, you know, I was just, eating and making the recipes I had learned and grown up with and picked up on over the years, studying abroad from friends in different countries, you know, you just, your lifestyle of learning how to eat. So it was really eye opening to, to see, oh, there's this whole different way of food combinations and um, herbs and spices and hydration. What's that? You can intentionally hydrate and there's ways to do that. And um, so I lost 15 pounds. I didn't even know I had to lose. Um, instead of having my coworkers, you know, making phone calls for me while I'm trying to do everything I can on email, I recovered my voice. You know, the, the cycle of laryngitis for a week, no laryngitis for a week, went away. And I learned at that time that yoga, which is, you know, a physical practice, I had been studying since college, it's actually an arm of Ayurveda. It ties your mind, your physical, your mind and spirit to your body and breath. So a marriage of those two. Um, and by learning how to re-eat, learning how to 
take care of myself through a lot of physical self practices. Um, it was it was really really eye opening, and changed my life really. So when I'm working with you know my clients, back to your question, it really allows me to and incorporate those spiritual things, the mental, right? The so much of our mindset affects our 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 emotional well health, our well being. And so I'm just having that holistic approach. I mean, not only saved my life, <laughs> but um, also helped with my wellness and helps me share that perspective with um, balance, finding that balance, right, with financial wellness mm -hmm. as well. Awesome. And, and I have to be honest, like I, 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 I have a book on Ayurveda, um, but I, I've not really delved into it very much so i'm i'm myself i'm intrigued um, and i hope and i'm sure several of you are going oh that's something we should look into yeah so, yeah, so it's incredibly complex it's the uh, eastern medicine it's a indian really the indian medicine uh, the practical application of balancing um the body so it's like a, an onion after you peel off that first layer there's lots and lots and lots and lots of layers to delve into after that, but very practical pieces you can use from day one. Yep. Typically though, with an onion, there's a lot of crying involved too. Yeah. <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> Perfect then. Um, Lori, I'm gonna pop back over to you and ask you uh, this question. What is spiritual junk food? <laughs> well, spiritual junk food is just like all the junk food you put in your body that feels good or has a benefit going in, but is actually not helping you. It's not nutritionally, you know, sound or really doing anything in the long term. So it's like the Coca-Cola, right? You know, Coca-Cola, you can, it tastes good going down and quenches your thirst, but that same drink can clean your, you know, battery in your car, <laughs> you know, take rust off of things. Um, so the spiritual junk food we have are like our limiting thoughts and like our patterns, the fear that we have, our negative self images, um, things like that that keep us um, cycling. So for instance, a perfect uh, version of spiritual junk food would be like um, victim or self-doubter, right? And um, we know that that's not a good thing for us to be. We know that, that it is ultimately not serving our highest good. It's ultimately confusing and complicating our life and our relationships. But we also know that when stuff hits the fan and you don't know how to respond or whatever, to pull that victim out, then becomes our saving grace. Because as soon as I'm victimized, you're hurting me, I'm crying, everything shifts into a different direction. And for that moment, your whatever is quenched. Mm -hmm. But it ultimately does not help you in the long run. It just keeps you in that spiral and staying, you know, mm -hmm. um, spiritually kind of um, deficient. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I would add to is about spiritual junk food is that with our bodies, we tell, we know that our bodies are like 70% water, right? And so we, every coach, every uh, fitness instructor, everybody else is going to tell you, drink water, stay hydrated. Your body needs water. And we try to um, take, uh, make sure that we're getting the stuff that we need for our body. Our soul is 100% what? Anybody? Energy? Yes, but what kind of energy? Specific energy. Universal. You got it. Love. Love. <laughs> Love. It is our body, who we are, the essence of our soul is love. So we are 100% in need of love. So this, again, more spiritual junk food we give us are the patterns of relationships and all those kind of things that go along with that. When our body, our soul needs that love. And so that's part of our nutrition that we've got to be giving ourselves spiritually um, it is love. And we, it's around us all the time. We got to dip into it because just like oxygen, 
you know, we need oxygen to breathe and it makes our body work. And then we, we you know, we or send it back out as carbon monoxide, right? Monoxide, not dioxide, whatever. One of those carbons. Yes. <laughs> and the plants clean it up for us and we cycle it back. That's exactly what love does. It's always a give and take. So we take in love. We love ourselves, divine love, the soul love that we share with people across the globe that we're sharing across the screen. We use it to build up our own self-awareness, self-worth, self-love, and then we exhale for somebody else to use it and recycle it. So we want to stay healthy. Those are the kind of yummy nuggets we need to be throwing in the soul. Oh, I love it. Thanks, Lori. You're welcome. Miss Luann, based on what you do, and I know so many things, you, you, you do so many amazing things. So whether it's based on the passion test or, or you, you make a decision with what you do, what is one thing that you could share with us um, about nourishing our body, mind, and soul? So Denise, I'm listening to these other amazing women. It's my belief that a lot of people are struggling with their mindset, right? And until we get the mindset right, I can't begin to dive into the conversation of soul um, or finances even, right? And so I look at the work of the passion test as a foundation to open the conversation into what is most important to you, what were you designed to be in this world? One of our favorite quotes from the book is, that which you love to do is God's will for you. That which you love to do is God's will for you. Not what's hard for you, not what's challenging, not you have to work harder to get ahead, all those, that's the voices in our mind, right? And so we have to reprogram that and the tools of the passion test help people to reprogram that mindset and open up to the possibility of the soul. And then I can create the financial wealth that I want. It's about decluttering the mind from all the other choices. We have a tendency, human beings, we all know this, compare ourselves to everybody else. It's not about everybody else. And all that's clutter in your mind that you're comparing yourself to everybody else, trying to keep up with the Joneses, look like everybody else. And the reality is you just got to be you. Yeah. You just got to be who you were designed to be. So I, I really believe the passion test is that foundation that, that opens the mindset to be able to take on all of these other things that these ladies are talking about to clear out the clutter, clear out the voices, the noise in your mind that's the false beliefs, right? That are holding us back. The junk food, or the junk, did you call it junk food or junk? Spirit junk. <laughs> junk <food. laughs> anyway, it's clearing all that out, being clearly focused on what it is I really want to create in my life. Based on what I love to do, my emotions. Our emotions are making all the decisions for us. And if, if we don't have that in check, that's when we overeat, we sit on the couch and don't go out and exercise because we're all just an emotional mess. Mm -hmm. And so you got to get that clear. So, you know, I know I teach it and just like Lori's talking all about the soul, I just truly believe in the work of the passion test and getting people that first step yeah. mm -hmm. into opening up the rest of the possibilities yeah. in their life. But I think, it, Luann, if I could just hop in for a second, I think you're absolutely right. But what I love and what I love about this group of amazing experts that we have on the Living Healthy List is that everybody finds the to get in where they fit in, right? And so for somebody, they're going to come into it from a soulful place. For somebody, it's going to come in from, I don't know what I want to do. What's my passion? And, and somebody's going to come in, it's like, I just, my house is a mess. I can't get it together. What's the thing? My money is whatever. But they find where they get in, and it all leads us back to the same place. Right. Absolutely agreed, right? And it's about the right teacher in the right moment that they exactly. can hear. They can hear the message they need in that moment. And exactly. that is all divinely guided as exactly. far as I'm concerned. I was in a networking event yesterday. They put us into random breakout rooms to do some <laughs> discussion on collaboration. And we just had the absolute right four people in our little breakout room who could really support and help each other. Divine intervention. Absolutely. 
That's awesome. I love, I love, you know, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to create Living Healthy List because all of us have such great experience and knowledge and, you know, to have all of our experts in one place for our audience to go to, you know, go to the website and you can read everybody's profile. Um, you can, you know, read articles from, from each of you. I mean, it's really, um, it's 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 been a humbling an experience for me to to help um, to to create this yeah with your it, help because I could never do this on my own. <laughs> it is such a beautiful thing you've created, Denise. You ought to be very proud of yourself, um, and I am proud to be a part of it. Absolutely. I wanted to also let you know you mentioned that you put something in the chat earlier, and mm -hmm. you did that potentially before all of us came in, and so those that came in later can't see it. And so oh. if, you could, if you could repost it, I think it would be important for everyone to have that link to join the summit. I believe that's what it was. It was, thank you. A reminder that they can still do that, but that, that's how Zoom works. If you come in after the post, you don't see it. I never knew that. Ha uh ha. -huh. We learn something every day about this Zoom thing. <laughs> we do, we learn something new every day. I'm, I'm open to that. And, and I think that's why we do what we do here. Uh, thanks for that, Luann. Um, Michelle, I want to pop back down to you real quick because I'm, I'm, I guess I'm really in, intrigued by the, the concept of Ayurveda and, um, so you have this, you're, you're an Ayurveda like, coach. What's, what would the phrase be? Practitioner? Um, and you're a money coach and you work with people. How, how does that, like, how does that work? I mean, it seems on, on, on one level, it seems to be so separate. You know, money is so, um, seems to be very concrete. So tell, tell, talk, talk about that a little bit. And by no means am I an Ayurvedic expert or practitioner. I've studied for maybe seven or eight years now, and I was an assistant coach <laughs> in a program. But it's truly healing. And I think that is the key that ties together, you know, what we were just talking about, whatever area you're feeling called to, to find a guide or teacher. Um, for me, my focus is on financial wellness and it's all about healing. You know, if there's things that are out of order that needs to be organized, you know, if we never learned how to create boundaries and set up our finances and manage that money to benefit, you know, ourselves and reach our goals, there's something deeper going on that, you know, needs to be uncovered. A lot of our money stories that affect our, our actions, behaviors today start way back, right? When we were young, growing up, the role models we had in our parents and our households. And so a big component of that is psychological um, so getting through that, um, I just think it's beautiful that, that you chimed in with the onion, the layers of onion and Ayurveda and crying because it is so much of a healing process. And, you know, it's not just any one thing. It's like looking at the bigger picture, what's going on, what's the mindset, what, what are your beliefs, your money beliefs that may be holding you back or other beliefs in your life that, um, need to be addressed before you can really be well and be find that balance, that overall um, balance between loving yourself, which reflects in everything, right? Your relationships, how you relate to others, your how you relate to your yourself, your environment, your finances, and so um, that's that's probably the biggest um, learning or lesson that I've gotten from the Ayurvedic studies. And it's just all encompassing. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to add something in support of what Michelle's talking about. I have spent many a year working on my money blockages <laughs> and the false beliefs and, and found some very interesting stories in my youth that have come up because of it, of why I have the beliefs or had the beliefs. Let's change the language that I used to have. And one of the things that I was taught that I just love and still remind myself of today is money is just energy. Mm -hmm. Money is just another form of energy and it's called currency. 
There you go. And the flow of currency is the figure eight, infinite, infinite currency, infinite energy going on. And so we must put out our money in order to have money flow to us. Put it out and it flows back to us. And so it's the constant flow of currency, thus the name of our money as currency. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I've also found there's a direct correlation between love and gratitude. That Absolutely. you're following and your flow rate right, of abundance. And Absolutely. Absolutely. So I have a question for all of you, and I already know the answer, but I'm going to throw <laughs> this one out to you anyway. So with what each of you do um, with, your, with your clients and yourselves, is this something you just do it once and you're good? Well, Are you asking how we work with our clients? No, basically like, you know, with, you know, with each of the things, you know, that we, that we're talking about, you know, is this one, it like kind of like a one and done thing. So I've decluttered this part of my life. I'm good. I'm good forever. You know, I've tapped into, you know, my spirit. Um, I'm good. Or is this something that this is, these are all practices that we need to really incorporate into our lives and pay attention to. Well, well thank you. Once. Yeah, since you mentioned decluttering and clutter, I will, I'll, I'll go first and, and, you know, absolutely not. It's not a one and done thing. Um, I mean, you know, each, you can, you know, each decluttering project can be finite. Um, but then again, going back to the mindset and knowing your why, you have to shift your mindset around the things in your home or else the clutter is going to come back. And also as we grow and change as people, when, when you do go through one decluttering session, you you can release what it is that you're able to release at that point in time. Um, as you change and as you grow, you go back and you look and you say, okay, I, I don't need to hold on to that anymore. So it's, it's just a constant relooking at, you know, what you're holding on to in your life and what you can let go of. Um, as far as decluttering and there's I mean it's like yes there are techniques that I that I teach people and that they can learn and I also really try and establish habit a habit of you know daily practices and you know you know you know weekly whatever quarterly practices um, but no basically it's like you just it's something that you just keep revisiting mm -hmm. uh, I would chime in yes and no so um, you know one of the things that I talk a lot about is part of a healthy life is sensuous living, right? And so sensuous living, again, most of us, when we think of sensuality and sensuousness, we think of it in terms of sex. And it's something that we pull out of our trick bag when we want to be sexy. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to be sensuous. Let me get the candles out and the, all that stuff. But sensuousness is actually to be actively aware of your surroundings and to find pleasure through your five senses. Our five senses are what make our world interactive. It makes the mundane delightful. It makes living, instead of just living, being alive. So if you understand, if that's the concept that you get first, mm -hmm. begin to, and that's the foundation of all my clients, no matter what we're working on, we first start with getting in touch with your sensuous world. Because what that does is, it'll, it first of all, raises your happiness quotient, like this. Because, right, <laughs> Luann, because you cannot walk out into the world and see the blue skies and the juxtaposition of the different greens on the trees and not and think, oh my God, amazing, whatever. It keeps you in the moment, right? And it keeps you, you're not worried about what happened, what might happen. So your anxiety levels, your well-being, your sense, everything's dropped right there. So if you just take that one tool and run with that for the rest of your life, that's the, that's the, yes, it's just one time and done. However, as you grow, you begin to realize that that same practice of living sensuously then becomes, um, oh my God, as I live through my five senses, I'm beginning to see my sens sensuous preferences. I like these kind, this kind of food. I like this kind of smell. I like this kind of look, this kind of music. And if you connect those dots, that brings you right back to your authentic self. We're always like, I don't know who I am, I would, right? Your sensory pleasures and pre preferences lead you to authentic self. So that's another level. So as you get there and you're beginning to grow and you evolve and, and change, 
oh, all of a sudden, the whole creating and manifesting thing, my intuition. Now I'm, I've trained myself to be in the moment. So within the moment, I'm looking for things. A perfect example is I, um, when I wanted to get divorced, I was scared. I didn't know why I couldn't pull the trigger. I knew this is what I wanted to do, but I couldn't pull the trigger. And I would meditate and the answer wouldn't come. I was like, all right, whatever. I go to a couple days later after I really asked the question, what is it? What do I need to pull the trigger? I'm in the drugstore. I mean, waiting to go in the drugstore and I'm waiting to be a car pull out to park. The car pulls out, backs up so I can see the license plate right in my viewfinder. The license plate said courage, <laughs> spelled out every single letter. And immediately I knew that's what my answer was. So stopping to smell the roses teaches you to stay in the moment so the validations, the signs, the divine guidance becomes clear. So yes and no. Some of it's one stop, and depending if your growth stops at that place, then yeah. But you still got happier, more well-being, less, you know, finding joy where you stand. But as you evolve, the tools I think that we all offer evolve with you because of those onion layers. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's the key. Lori, thank you for teaching me something today. I just learned a new, you know, new meaning for sensuous living. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. It what is. I do, but I wasn't even acknowledging it, you know, and there's a mm -hmm. conscious awareness that solidifies that. Exactly. And yes, if I, if I've solidified that with through conscious awareness and continue to continue to live it, you might call it one and done, but I, I more agree with it's an evolution. Yeah. It's an evolution and we're all going through that evolution. And frankly, my belief is we didn't come onto this planet to learn all of this out here. We came to learn this yes, in here. Yes. And Absolutely. it's a constant journey into self and adding new tools along the way. And the passion test is just one of those tools that can help you continue that journey. And so, no, Denise knows well, it's not one and done because she's been through it many times herself. Um, we do it at least annually at a women's retreat that we do together. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you need it more than that, sometimes we do. Sometimes we're in that self-doubt and it's time to do it again. Or something dramatic might have happened and that I need to rethink through this. So at this time of our crisis, right? I think there's a lot of people sitting out there questioning what their life was like before. Is that what I want it to be after this? Mm -hmm. What could be different? And now's a perfect time to be looking through healthy li living healthy list and the tools that we all have and find the tools that work for you and take advantage of those tools during this time to reevaluate your life. You know, Michelle became who she is because of a dramatic situation that she needed to seek to improve her own health, right? And all too often people wait for that dramatic situation mm -hmm. to take a look at their life and maybe it's time to make a change or get healthier, what have you, right? We see it all the time here in the world of the Mayo Clinic where people get diagnosed with life-threatening diseases and all of a sudden the life that they were living before is no longer good enough because they've seen their own mortality and it's time to shift and change. And the coronavirus is providing that same vision for a lot of people right now. Unfortunately, it has to come to this. I always tell people, if you don't like the thing in your life, change the channel. You know, you have the power to recreate yourself anytime you want to. Do not wait for the crisis to hit, to decide to change. Yep. But once you do see it and consciously are aware that this isn't what I want, yeah. then seek the tools to get what you want because you have the power to create it. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing that's important is age, it does not matter. It does not matter. It does not matter. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can always learn and grow um, there's always something there's always something else to to experience mm -hmm. yeah there's um i just had a great conversation about the whole wor world of retirement right so our society has trained us that you work hard get ahead you know climb the corporate ladder and then one day you get to retire and i've been working with retirees who are going i i worked all my life for this moment and now this moment is meaningless like I don't know my purpose because I'm so affiliated with that job I had for 35, 40 years, whatever it is, that they've lost meaning and purpose in their life. 
and they have a lot of life left to live. Yeah. The financial advisor I was talking to was, he said, I'm working with a 55 year old who wants to retire. And I asked him, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? So you want to play golf. Well, pretty soon golf becomes boring. <laughs> and if he's in Minnesota, he's not playing golf very, very long during the year. Maybe we've yeah. got three good months. So Four. I, I, I want to change the, the language as to what's the next stage hmm. instead of retirement. What's the next stage after your career that you want to go into? And then it might be this, this personal journey if you have yet to do it. Yeah. I love it. We never stop evolving, right? Life happens. Right. So I just wanted to add to that something I'm, I'm constantly telling my clients is that, you know, this work is like laundry or dishes. It never stops. You do what you, you know, you get caught up and then there's more to do because we're constantly learning. Life happens. You know, we get out of balance. We need to get back into balance. Um, new, you know, growth opportunities arise as we evolve. So you knew the answer before we even <laughs> talked about it, Denise. But such a great question. I've loved what's come out of this, this question. I, I am too. That's why I wanted to ask because obviously I knew the answer, but I thought it would be important to, to really pull out um, the answer from all of you uh, just to, for, for our audience to, to, to get all those, those good tidbits. So we have about seven minutes left. Um, I'd like for each of you to just quickly um, give us one more tidbit that you can share with our audience. Leanne, if you would, I'm, I'm looking right at you. Sorry, you're right on my right hand, so I'm gonna pick on you. <laughs> uh, no, pick on me, that's fine. Um, so I would say like if the one tip that I could, could give you um, when it's, when you want to clear the clutter, physical, mental, spiritual, whatever your clutter is for you, is to really know your why. Uh, going back again, know what's available to you, know what you're going for on the other side of that clutter. Um, because whether you're, um, whether you're on a journey to declutter your diet, uh, your finances, your spare bedroom, um, your closets, um, there's going to come a point in time when you, you know, you just, you're tired. It's, it's exciting when you first start, it's like, yes, I'm going to get this done. Um, but then you're going to get tired. And, and if you don't have, if you don't have a clear vision of where you're going, you know, what's, what's your why, what's available to you on the other side of this journey, um, you're going to falter. So it's like, just really, really spend time getting clear with that even before you start. So that would be my tip. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Lori? Um, I guess it's more of a recap than a tip, a, a couple of things. I think that it's, I would definitely say if you're trying to get started, in, especially in this environment, start with your five senses. Really, it's, it's a God-given gifts. Um, it's going to teach you so much but the first thing it's gonna do is give you that woo-saw moment where you're just gonna be able to relax. It teaches you to find joy where you stand. And when finding joy, it's like the ultimate adult pacifier because in any given moment, you can calm yourself by finding something beautiful, which always goes to the gratitude, which always leads to the appreciation. And those are just all part of love's language. So with that, I would also reiterate that again, you're, you, are love the essence of what you are is love and you've got to feed love because in the feeding of love and that's good sun energy kind of love um in feeding of love that's the way you give and receive that's the way you grow that's the way you enable yourself to handle all of the contrast that your life presents to you and it's also the way that you can take contrast and look at it without judgment. It's not as good or bad. This sucks, it's not. It is, all right, this is an indicator of something is misaligned or aligned. And when you stop judging the emotion and the, the circumstances, you stop judging yourself because we ultimately become the emotion and that's another part of the junk food we are. Instead of being angry and seeing the, for being the angry we become the anger 
and that's the junk food that gets us all, you know, uh, whatever, bloated and out of, out of alignment. And just remember that your love flow is available all the time. Those snack, love snacks are available all over. Start with divine, source, God, whatever you want to call it. Um, connect with that through self, the soul love, the random acts of kindness, the just taking care of each other. All that is love language. And, and look to your um, ability to give and receive. And that's the other thing your sensuous living is going to do. If you cannot be in the moment and, and stay engaged enough to notice all that's around you, to taste the texture, the, the what food tastes like, that's telling you about your inability to receive fully. And if that's you true. cannot receive fully, you'll never feel complete. Love will never feel like it's enough. And so you really have to, there's a lot to learn through those seven smelling the roses and, and eating chocolate. <laughs> and eating chocolate. Um, Michelle and Luann, if you would, um, one of you go first and uh, just tell us, give us, you know, one last tip. Or yeah, I'll go. I'll go. As you're listening to yourself, I, I truly believe all the answers are within uh, but you don't know where to start or you're feeling overwhelmed, you know, just take it step by step, just one little step at a time. Mm -hmm. And when you're, you know, lost at that, find a mentor, find a, a teacher, a coach, a friend um, to, to be that guide and, and give you that accountability. I mean, those are the two things that I, I have found that have helped me the most, especially when I'm feeling stuck or overwhelmed or in need of massive healing is, you know, just step by step and not to get overwhelmed and finding that support. Thanks, Michelle. And I'm just going to agree with Michelle and the others. I love what we learned today about sensory and being present in the moment. And we all need mentors and coaches to help us on our journey. And so reach out to someone um, for that. I put my information in the chat room. So if anybody wants to reach out to me individually and uh, do a free consult with me, I would love that. And then if I could, Denise, end with my invitation to join the iHug movement. We're yes, doing yes. virtual yes. hugs yes. these days, the sign language but you can hug virtually with sign language and love from your eyes, pour love from your eyes. Love is all that we are, right? So pull it up and send it out with your eyes to all the people on the front lines serving us today, keeping us safe. I have um, an intentional virtual hug happy hour, Mondays at 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, you can find it on my Facebook page, I Hug Movement. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook page or ihugmovement.com is the website. This is just a grassroots effort of spreading love in the world through the human connection of a hug, and I can hardly wait till I can get back to actually hugging people. Oh, I know. Yeah, Luana, in, the meantime, in the meantime, we're doing the best we can virtually, and I'm using the power of eight, the intentional power of eight, to spread that energy in the world. So please come and join me on Mondays at 5 p.m. Central Time and share virtual hugs. We are only on, we're only on the call for maybe about 10, 15 minutes by the time we gather people, set our intention, send out the hugs and love. It's a real brief conversation. Love to have you join me. Awesome. Um, you can also find all of the information, the events that our uh, Living Healthy List experts are, uh, are hosting on livinghealthylist.com in our events section. Um, for our other three, Lori, Leanne, and Michelle, if you would, if you'd like to put your information in the chat room, uh, yeah, the chat room, I'll make sure that everybody gets a copy of your, uh, your uh, contact information as well. I hope everybody had a chance to learn some amazing new things today. Um, would certainly love if you have any comments, uh, questions, you know, pop it into the, the chat and we can... Uh, uh, we're at we're at noon, so I, I want to make sure that we're, I'm I'm I honor everybody's time. But you can always connect with us on livinghealthylist.com. You can find us on the the Facebook group. Um, this particular Facebook group, our Diet Demystified Facebook group. Um, as time goes on, that will actually be our Living Healthy List uh, Facebook group. So we're all connected on that Facebook group. So if you have questions for any of our uh, amazing speakers today uh, or for me, please um, check us out. 
let us know and we're here to help. Thank you so much everyone for being with us today. I really appreciate your time and I wish you a great day. Hugs to you all. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. This is great. Thanks, everybody. Sorry. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, Good. Leanne. Are awesome. Bye. Thanks, Michelle. Have a great day. Bye, Leticia. Bye, Christy. Bye, Deb. Bye, everyone. Bye, and stay Bye everyone. And Thank Cheryl. you so much. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thanks, Leticia. Get your time so much. You're the best. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.